So glad that you can join us for this live webinar series hosted on Mayo Clinic Connect. Again, I'm Janine Kokel, patient educator with Mayo Clinic Cancer Education Program, Rochester, Minnesota. I'll be moderating this session and I'll be taking, we'll be taking questions at the end of today's session. At the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll be able to see uh, an area where it says chat, a chat function. And on there, you can post your questions at any time, but we'll take the questions at the end of the session today. We want you, people to know that are watching this session that it will be recorded. So individuals who are not able to join us for the live session can watch it at a later date. And for those of you who'd like to view this webinar again, the recording takes about three days to be edited and put on our video library tab on the cancer education page on Mayo Clinic Connect. I will share that, uh, that uh, link with, uh, on the chat function in just a moment once we get started. As a reminder, the Mayo Clinic Connect is a digital platform where patients, family members, and caregivers can connect. They can get evidence-based information and get access to information about classes and programs that are offered um, through this venue. We encourage you to follow our cancer education blog on Mayo Clinic Connect so you can stay up to date on upcoming webinars and our other educational opportunities. So this session is the first in a series, a three-week series on financial toxicity in cancer, managing the costs of cancer. Medical insurance issues will be the focus for today. The next two sessions will be presented a little bit later in May, May 17th on employment concerns, May 24th on medical health financial planning. Both of those are at 11 o'clock in Arizona or Mountain Time and one o'clock for Central Standard Time. You can register for uh, those now if you go out on the Mayo Clinic C Connect site. <clears throat> So getting started for today, the term financial toxicity is used to describe uh, the treatment related financial strain that's experienced by so many people dealing with a diagnosis and treatment of cancer. However, we know that financial impact goes well beyond active treatment costs. This series of presentations will address the many factors that can contribute to financial toxicity, identify strategies to manage debt, tips for reducing financial burden, and outline financial resources that can help. Today's session is focused uh, focusing on managing the cost of cancer care, medical insurance issues. <clears throat> Whether you have it, medical insurance or not, it can affect your risk of financial toxicity. Even with health insurance, the out-of-pocket costs for your cancer care may still be overwhelming. This session will review commonly used terms related to medical insurance coverage, describe typical reasons why insurance claims may be denied, tips for keeping your medical and insurance paperwork organized, and identify ways to help you make the most of your insurance coverage. It's my pleasure to introduce our speakers for this webinar session. Yvonne Chase is the manager for patient financial services at Mayo Clinic in Phoenix, Arizona. Anita DeMar is a supervisor in financial counseling and services at Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. They are our main presenters today, but they're also going to have a, a, a Another content expert uh, from Rochester, Minnesota, Angela Young, who's also a licensed social worker, but works as a patient navigator here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. She'll be on board for assisting for any questions um, that, um, or any input that might be needed throughout the program as well. All right, with that, please uh, join me in welcoming Yvonne Chase. Thank you. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Thank you, Janine. And I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm, I'm fighting a, a cold, so I apologize for that. Do you want to go to the next slide, Janine? Yeah. So financial toxicity. What is it? Janine explained a little bit about it, but it's the economic consequences of medical treatment and the financial burden, as well as the financial stress during your cancer care treatment. Financial stress can leave patients often making difficult decisions like skipping tests and appointments, skipping medicine or splitting medicine and refusing to take treatment. 
We know that there are many contributing factors. There's a reduced income oftentimes when you're getting cancer care. There's issues with transportation, lodging, medication, and oftentimes medical needs are not covered by insurances. Uh, so together we are planning to help you minimize this financial stress and reduce your risk. Next slide, please. Again, this session is on your medical insurance concerns. Next slide, please. So we oftentimes in, in the medical field uh, use a vocabulary that our patients aren't used to. And so we wanna go over some important um, vocabulary around insurance and, and what that means. The cost to have insurance is your monthly premium. So, that, so the cost to use your insurance you have an annual deductible that you must meet out of pocket. Oftentimes, along with that deductible, you'll have a co-payment and a co-insurance, and then you have a maximum out of pocket. So it's really important to keep track of these costs to use your insurance and when you meet that, and how will you accommodate um, paying for those uh, costs. Other common terms are your explanation of benefits. And this is something you will receive either in the mail or you can get it electronically. And it's, the, it's an explanation from your insurance of what is covered and what is your out-of-pocket expense. Did that out-of-pocket expense apply to your deductible? Did it apply to your co-insurance? Um, and is it also going towards your maximum out-of-pocket? So very important to keep that per, uh, paperwork. In-network versus out-of-network. Oftentimes our insurances uh, contract with specific facilities. So it's important to know, are you in network with the facility where you're getting care or the center where you're getting care versus out of network? As an in network patient, you will have uh, a less out of pocket. So out of network, you oftentimes will have a larger um, deductible, more co-pays, more co-insurance. Um, monthly statements, those are the statements you'll receive from your providers um, on your care, and you can match that monthly statement to your EOB, and that is very helpful to keep track of your out-of-pocket expenses. Open enrollment, this is the time when your employer or your insurance um, has the opportunity to enroll in a plan. Usually it uh, starts in October, ends in the end of November, but it, that's dependent on employer or um, Medicare open enrollment. Prior authorization, that's requirements from your insurance for care. And some of those um, insurances do require prior authorization for many of those services. It would include prior authorization for your infusion therapy, chemo, medications of that nature. Um, medical necessity. That's your insurance defining is the care that we're ordering for you or the care that is being prescribed medically necessary. And so those are um, insurance policies around the need to deliver the care. COBRA um, is a term we, that's used for um, if you leave an employer group, you have the ability to pick up insurance And that employer group must provide you the paperwork to um, fill out in order to be eligible for your COBRA. Um, oftentimes, the premium will be a little bit higher than you, know, well, quite a bit higher, unfortunately, than you would normally pay um, your, uh, through your employer. Anita, do you have anything else to add to this slide? Just to, the only thing I want to add is that the annual deductible, the co-payment, the co-insurance are three separate groups that they'd be responsible for, which would total up to their total maximum out of pocket. Correct. Thank you. Next slide, please. Um, on this slide, we're going to talk a little bit about denials with cancer care service. Um, we tried to identify what are the key reasons that we see denials. And unfortunately, we do see this. And, um, 
you know, we, we try to partner with our patients to um, either turn this around or, or not have it happen at all. But what we see is prior authorization was not obtained. So you may have a particular test and the, where you had that test, they did not seek prior authorization for that, that service for you. So it is not a bad idea as you're getting care to um, partner um, with, with the organization to ask them these questions. Did you get prior authorization for my infusion? Um, that's that's you know, a very legitimate question. Now there are some plans like Medicare that don't require that um, to happen uh, at this point, but there most of our most of the commercial plans do. Um, there could be a denial that you're out of network. Maybe the the physician you're seeing or the facility you're using um, does, uh, would would be denied because you don't have any out of network benefits, and they are out of network. Non covered services. Um, some of the uh, coverage uh, decisions are made based on a policy that may, uh, you may have had a service that is total, totally non-covered. Um, and oftentimes we see uh, another denial of being investigational and experimental. And um, we, you know, we work through that with our patients. They could be deemed not medically necessary so we see all these denials on a regular basis. And I think it's important to partner with your provider because we can do appeals. We can um, provide clinical documentation to try to overturn as many of these denials as, as we possibly can. But I think it's an awareness and you will get your ELB and it'll specifically say on there the reason it was denied. So what are the things you can do? You can call your insurance and see if they're in network. Um, it's important for you to do that and to know that before seeking care. You can notify your, your doctors or your care team. Um, I think our physicians would probably say our care team because we know that our patients talk um, to their providers on a regular basis about denial. So I think the sooner it, we know about it, the better off so we can be an advocate for you. Um, you can advocate with your employer who offers the medical insurance plan um, and work with them directly. And then oftentimes for cancer care, the insurance companies will have care managers and you can request who is that care manager and what can they do to help you uh, overturn any, any denials possibly um, partner with even our care managers are on our site or our social workers. Anita, anything else that I might have missed on this slide that you could suggest for our, um, our audience? Uh, knowing their benefits with their insurance company, if we're in network or out of network, at least your insurance company can let you know what you can and can't do, where you can and cannot go. Um, but that's pretty much it. Okay, thank you. Um, next slide, please, Janine. So make the most of your insurance. Do not let your insurance lapse. It's really important. And I know that oftentimes people let it lapse because they don't have the, the money to pay the premiums. So that's something that you need to get ahead of. Um, for sure, to stay current on those premium payments and not let it lapse so you have continuous coverage. And know your plan and its coverage. So again, we said in a previous slide, please try to use in-network providers. Um, often many insurance plans will have providers throughout where you're located and you'll have an option of selecting multiple places you can go. Proactively ask your insurance if prior authorization is needed. Um, sometimes it will be in your coverage uh, paperwork and they'll let you know what requires prior authorization. Oftentimes in this space, prior authorization is needed because the, the costs are very, very high for sure. Um, prior authorization confirms medical necessity only. So, you know, we could say we, we could get prior authorization 
we could do cross all, you know, do all that we're supposed to do, dot our I's and cross our T's, and, and sometimes the insurance will still deny. So that's why we have to partner with them and, and watch this on very closely. And then follow up with uh, wherever you're seeking care. Here it is, our business office, our patient account services. Um, but don't neglect uh, when you get things in the mail or you get denials or you get bills. Um, you know, we really need to partner with our patients early on and resolve that together and not leave that until the last minute. Next slide, please. Anita, I'm going to let you go on, but did you have something you wanted to add? Um, no, just, just keep in contact with uh, the financial counselors on your billing. Mm -hmm. Keep an open communication because we want to be here to help you. So. I'll do, take do you over. want to take this slide? Yeah. I'll take this. I'll take them from here on okay. out. So with a little organization goes a long way. Pay attention to your bills. Make sure you hold on to them. You look at them. Put them in a file if you have to to organize yourself. Investigate anything odd or incorrect. Maybe some services were billed that you didn't have or go through. Question those. Make sure you match your medical bills to your explanation of benefits that we like to call our EOBs. We encourage you not to put off looking at your bills. Don't push them aside, don't ignore them. Once you start ignoring your bills, it becomes more of a, a bigger problem than that small little problem. Avoid the temptation to put off or avoid looking at your bills and the insurance documentation. Since a little organization goes a long way, keeping a complete record of your statements, the submitted statements of your bills, your monthly statements, your explanation of benefits to match up with those bills that you're getting. Keep copies of all paperwork, any letters of medical necessity. Maybe your doctor said, we needed to do this test because of whatever reason, and that letter will help the insurance company understand or identify why you know, it needed to be done. Keeping copies of your explanation of benefits that we call our EOBs on hand to match up with your bills that are coming in. Always keep copies of all your bills and receipts of anything you paid for. Another thing that is important to keep track of is your Family Medical Leave Act, which is also known as FMLA. It's important to have FMLA paperwork filled out by, by your doctor to hand into your employer group for continuous coverage as well as keeping correspondence with the insurance company. Keep all correspondence with the insurance company. The insurance company can send you a letter on one little item out of a large bill that you received. It's always good to make sure that you have all your paperwork with you. If you don't understand it, coming into the business office to meet with the financial counselor so they can go over it with you and help you match up your bills, uh, the payments and insurance from the insurance and or the denials or anything that needs to be appealed by your insurance company. Um, any questions from you, Yvonne? Sorry, I had that mute button on. No, I, I think you've covered it pretty closely. I think the, I think the key is um, just keeping, just detail, right? Devil's in the detail and making sure that you you know, you just continue to do this each month. You have the bill, you match it up because it gets away from you as you get care. And if you're not feeling well, um, it could even, even, you know, go longer than you'd like without doing that. And if, you know, if you have an advocate for you also, um, I think that's a good thing to have someone who can help you with that when you, when you aren't feeling good. Thank you, that's true. Having someone there to help you with your bills. Um, go ahead to the next slide, please. Talk to your care team early. Very important to keep open communications with your care team in regards to concerns on paying your bills. Maybe you're not able to, to pay them right away. You can set up a payment plan. Not everybody has the money to pay their bills right when they come in. So concerns with your bills. Concerns about cost of medications. Other expenses that you can incur along with being sick or having your care or, or coming for appointments and treatments. Potential loss of a job. 
uh, which would be a potential loss of income and a loss of insurance. If the communication is kept open and talking about what you can do for coverage, what the other options are, what you can do, where you can get help, where you can get financial help. Have your support, have your, have, you have support from your care, from your team. Express questions and concerns as they arise. Explore resources to help you with these, with your needs. Who can help? Who can help is your care team, your cancer care team. Business office financial counselor, social worker, patient navigator, and patient account services for post care. The reason why it's important to make sure you keep communication open with your care team, the business office, your social workers, so we can find avenues of helping you with these expenses, helping, helping you find if there's a, a loss of job, see how we can help getting some bills paid for you, potential loss of income, how we can help get the insurance coverage for you, and how we can help find insurance for you if there is no options for a COBRA. Any questions or to touch on that, Yvonne? No, I think you covered it. I think, um, you know, the COBRA is a big deal. You know, if you can't afford the COBRA, you need to have those conversations um, with your care team because if you let the insurance lapse and we could have found ways to help you with the COBRA, um, you, you would have continued to have insurance. So I, I think, you know, what we're talking about is early intervention, keep, keep on task, understand what's going on, and keep that communication open so that you don't get to a place where we're not able to assist you with things. Thank you. Our, our, the care team is, is active in your care. The business office is active in the finance portion of it. Your social workers and patient navigators will help seek help wherever you need it along your care. Um, and then our patient account services for post care in the event that you've kept up in your bills, you've paid your out of pocket amount, and there's other things that you're not understanding. Our patient account services can help you with the balance of your bill that if you're not able to pay for or set up a payment arrangement or find ways that we can help you get it paid or help you find ways to get it paid. So next slide. So these are the national resources, is our cancer, triage cancer. And here are the links, Patient Advocate Foundation, Cancer Legal Resource Center in Cancer Care. Um, any questions? Oh. Sorry, I'm just coming back on again for a moment. I could get off the mute button either. So uh, <laughs> thank you both for that uh, very informative uh, presentation. You know, this is complicated content, and I think it's overwhelming, can get overwhelming for people in a hurry, especially if you just don't... Um, you know, you are really dealing with a lot of those kind of uh, financial questions, concerns, content, uh, even just lingo. So um, I think your points about staying in contact with your care team, reach out for questions, don't put it off and, you know, get on top of it, keep those communication lines open early on are good messages, especially. So let's see if we have any questions and maybe when we're waiting for a few questions um i could bring in also angie young for a moment to see if um she has any comments or thoughts she wanted to add as well uh, if she's available yeah yeah so i'm here thanks janine so yvonne and anita did an excellent job kind of going through and covering all the components of the insurance um, I think the thing that um, as a patient navigator and our social work team, what we're, what we're so always um, encouraging our patients and caregivers to understand is that all of these um, concerns are very normal, right? A lot of our patients experience this. And so this is something that 
that we just want people to not feel ashamed of if you have these concerns or these issues along the way. This is this happens for these are conversations that all of our patients um, will have at some point in time. It just depends on um, you know whether that happens right away at the beginning because we identify an insurance issue right away, or do we have something that pops up later? So there's no defined time where, where as a care team, we're going to talk to patients about this because they pop up at different times along the way. So that's really why we want to convey this message that really, if you have concerns or questions that come up along the way, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, because again, there is no set time where we can help anticipate or expect these things to come up. Um, Cause as Yvonne said, sometimes best laid plans still, still will have things that fall through. Um, but again, the care team is there to help. And, and that care team involves your, your providers, the financial team, social work, patient navigation. You have a whole team on your side. Um, I will say it's incredibly important. And a lot of patients have a lot of family members and friends in that caregiver role that are looking to um, better understand how they can support the patient all of this matching up of documentation that Yvonne and Anita talked about, how important that is. It's really, it's really important to do, but it can be a lot of added stress and anxiety. And so it's a good task to delegate out to a family member or friend that you trust to help you with that. Um, it gives them something to do and it gives them um, a sense of being helpful to the patient. Um, and, and it's keeping the patient organized too with all their paperwork, which can be incredibly overwhelming. I think the thing, I think the thing that um, I'm not sure if I heard Anita or Yvonne say, and I apologize if you did say it and I, and I didn't hear it, but many um, patients now, I feel like insurance companies are having you go to online portals. So in the event you don't actually get papers mailed out to you, um, make sure you have written down your username and passwords to get into your insurance portals where you can view those explanation of benefits or you can view those statements in your Mayo Clinic account. Um, so many things are going to paperless. And so it may be that you don't get paper and don't be alarmed if you don't get paper, but it means you probably have an online portal that you'd need to log in using a username and password. Um, I don't think there's anything else I would add at this point. I don't know, Janine, if we have any questions. Um, just an uh, idea of like, if people are not from Mayo, advice on where they should start at their institution for help, getting help. So, you know, most of our facilities have care, cancer care teams across the, you know, the United States and Everyone has a patient financial services office and oftentimes business office. So I, I think they may call it something different, but structurally there is a care team. Um, there, it might be a financial navigator that helps you versus the business office or the, the counselor. Um, but I, I think start with the care team and then ask them, who are your resources? Because they'll know because they get the complaints about the bill. So they'll, they'll know um, who to send you to. Right. Okay, perfect. And I left this resources sheet up again a bit, just as I wondered if one of you could expand just a bit on when they may should go to these sites, or is there a recommendation to go to any of these sites or for why? You know. Did you want me to speak to that? Yeah, if you could, Angie. Okay, sure. sure. Yeah, I'm happy to. And I think, Janine, we are going to post this list of resources out on, mm -hmm. on Mayo Connect. And then I don't know if you've attached it in the chat box or not. I, I didn't, but I okay. we do have a resource sheet that okay. is listed out on um, on on the on the Mayo Clinic Connect, Connect with that'll be attached with these uh, webinars. Yeah. Sounds good. So yeah, so that resource list will be out there and easy to access the, the hyperlinks. But triage cancer is just an excellent resource. Um, they have a lot of different learning um, tools available. Some of it is, is print material, others are videos, um, but it really will break down 
all those um, pieces that Yvonne and Anita did an excellent job in communicating and talking about all the intricacies of insurance, all those definitions. Um, so many of our patients, this is the first um, big medical um, diagnosis or condition they've, they've had. And so many haven't had to learn more about their insurance. And really, this is the first time they're actually using their insurance, um, you know, in, in a way that we're, we're having to talk about these out-of-pocket expenses. Um, and so it's, it's a lot of learning and new terminology for our patients, even though they've been insured and many times have th had the same insurance for many years, they just haven't had to use it. So triage cancer has a, has a lot of information out there that really breaks down the definitions and videos that walk you through it. Um, very much like um, what uh, Anita and Yvonne did for us today. And, and again, you can go back and reference this out on Mail Connect once this video is posted. Uh, Patient Advocate Foundation is a nonprofit organization that really um, helps patients kind of understand um, what their rights are and will help um, assign a, an advocate to assist patients if they need sort of an advocate along the way. Um, this is an excellent resources for our patients, you know, that, that maybe need that additional support if they don't have a family member or friend and, and maybe just need to better understand, um, kind of what they, what their next steps might be. And for maybe, um, patients that are in smaller cancer centers that are watching the video and don't have access to a comp, a comprehensive team, um, patient advocate foundation would be an excellent resource. The Cancer Legal Resource Center is, is really just exactly what it says. It's a resource for our cancer patients, any type of legal concern they might have. Sometimes patients um, get fired from their job and it's somewhat illegal, um, but that directly impacts their ability to have medical insurance. And so that's where we really lean on Cancer Legal Resource Center. They have a lot of education material out there, but they partner with um, a a legal, um, a legal team that will assist patients um, in, in helping to identify um, if there really is a legal concern and what next steps they might consider. Um, and then of course, Cancer Care is just an excellent um, organization that talks, you know, they have a lot of material about a lot of different cancer types, a lot of things about financial assistance, a lot of things around insurance, um, just general support, really excellent caregiver material out there. So just a, it's a, just a good organization overall with a lot of, a lot of different information on their website. Okay. Well, uh, I don't think we've gotten any other questions, but I want to thank all three of you for your time and sharing your expertise and talent and, and experience today with this webinar. It was well done, and I think it'll be a valuable resource for many people um, ongoing. So any last comments that you'd like to share? No, I, I just wanted to add, you know, what Angie said, it kind of hit home earlier about Oftentimes your family or friends feel hopeless and don't know what to do. And if, if they could take on this piece of navigating your insurance for you, it helps them feel better. And, you know, it's that really hit home because I, I've experienced that. And I think oftentimes we don't want to burden someone else, but it isn't really a burden to them. So I appreciate that, that insight. Yeah, that's a good point. Good comments from everybody. Thank you so much for your time today. And thank you to everybody who joined us. Appreciate it. Thank right. you. Thank, thank you. Have a good day. Bye.